Blog Talk Radio. You are listening to the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Welcome to Earth Sky People Radio. Living in harmony with Mother Earth and awakening to an intergalactic society. With your host, Victoria Vives, founder of Reiki Wellbeing and co founder of the Earth Sky People Movement. Hello, this is Earth Sky People Radio with your host, your friend, Victoria Vives. You can find me at victoriavives.com. And today is Tuesday, September 16, 2014, and we are together in Earth Sky People Radio. So for a moment, I would like to tune in with you. And if you are not driving, please close your eyes for a moment. And breathe into your heart. Breathe in, in and out. Yes, becoming more and more aware of our interconnectedness. Visualizing yourself as a beautiful, bright light radiating in all directions. And seeing how your own inner light connects with the light of others around you. Strengthening that web of light and love and healing all around the world. Take one more thing, cleansing breath, and just keeping that peace. We are going to continue now with the show, so you are free to open your eyes. <laughs> and Earth Sky People Radio, as you know, Earth is representing our connection with Mother Earth and nature, and Sky is representing spirituality, and life beyond the earth, extraterrestrial life, extra-dimensional life. Last week, we shared a space with Christopher Niarga in a very thought-provoking interview, learning down-to-earth practical tips to increase your life, freedom, and do that right now. So you can listen to the replay of that interview in the archive. And today, we have a very special show because it is the first of this kind in Earth Sky People Radio, with an amazing guest. His name is Dwayne Hartman, and he will actually be guiding a hypnotherapy session live, and that will be after our Q&A section, so stay tuned for that. And to call in for the Q&A, the phone number is 347-215-86. And then just remember to press 1 to ask your question. Okay, so a, a little bit about Wayne Hartman. He's a certified hypnotherapist trainer and co-author and creator of the Hartman approach to hypnotherapy. He is the creator of the Human Harmonics Program. Wayne has conducted countless hypnotherapy training classes for over a decade. He assists people to find the place of suspended self-judgment that can otherwise be called the zone or your true nature. Dwayne is here on Earth for one sole purpose, which is to provide humanity with the simplest, most grounded approach to spiritual enlightenment that he can through emotional alchemy. His website is innerbalancehypnotherapy.com. And now, <laughs> we welcome Dwayne Hartman. Hi, Dwayne. Are you there? <laughs> I'm here. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to your wonderful show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. And we have already a few things that we have done together. We were together in the Chanting for Peace and Laughter. And then also you had me on your show. So that was a great experience. And I'm so happy to get together again. Well, you know, the thing of it is, is we're kind of like family, right? <laughs> it's kind of, kind of good yes. to, for all of us to kind of get together and get to know each other. And uh, even though we're in different corners of the world, um, we, there seems to be a uh, one 
kind of theme that's going on is that we're all one and there is no separation really. Mm, how beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> okay, so I would love for you to share a, a little bit about how did you start your journey? What brought you here? Well, what what brought me brought me here was that um I, all through my life, ever since I was a child, I could see, uh, I could see things differently than, than say what they are. I was always aware that there was some sort of uh, something going on that got people to believe that they were less than what they truly were, right? And so I, I, I started out very young, uh, very concerned about that, and working towards. Uh, ways to help people to feel freer and feel this zone that we talk about or our true nature. I know that in our true nature, we, uh, we're quite free and that we're not confined to things. And, uh, and so when I started at a very young age, I was, I mean, I was still in what grade four, grade five, and I'm work, you know, I was working with, my friends, you know, who would feel bad or sad or whatever and helping them to shift. And I had no idea then that this would turn out to what it, you know, what it is today. Yeah, but yeah, at a very young age, I, I was aware of this, um, this vib- vibration that humanity was kind of suppressed by. Yeah. Mm. Can you elaborate on that? Well, this vibration is like a hypnosis itself, um, is what I found out later. Later in my life, I got, that's why I got into, into hypnotherapy is because I wanted to figure out what was putting human beings into a trance where they, they felt wow. that they were limited and they couldn't do things, right? Oh, right? And so I started working on that. Uh, at a young young age, and uh, you know, in my 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 even my teens and my twenties, working on ways to help people to come out of that societal hypnosis that was going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know what you know what that's like. Kind of uh, at some point in our life, we feel very limited and we can't do much, right? But yet the more that we right. get into the ascension process or get into our own uh, uh, lo- loving self and freeing self, that we we become very, very uh, free compared to what we were when we were in that, that uh, limited perspective, that social consciousness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how I that's how I started out. I mean, I've had a few experiences along the way that helped me to come back to the path because I had wandered off a bit uh at one point and uh you know, I had uh an intervention there where uh I was visited by uh some Octurians that uh reminded me of what I'm supposed to kind of do here. And uh, and that was helpful too. Uh, that really brought me back to the path, and I haven't veered from it since. No. Wow! So I would love for you to share more about that experience with the Arcturians. Would you share with us? Well, what? Yes, I was I was with a friend of mine, and we were driving down the road. We were going to a work camp, and uh, and uh, a light appeared. And it came in behind the car, and we, right in the you know middle of driving, we were we weren't there anymore. It happened very quickly, and we were someplace else. Um, and wow. in this other place, it was beautiful. The the beings were were light beings. They um, you could see their features. But the light was so bright, it was kind of hard to make make them out. But you could feel the intense love, tremendous love, and um, and these beings uh, were there to remind 
me again of why I was here and what the potentials were and how to help myself and others to move beyond uh, the trap, the, the, the social enslavement that was going on. And that this was, to them, was very, very important that humanity understand that they were much, much freer than what they believed they were. And so there was a certain amount of this sort of education that was going on with me or re-education. And then um, there was also understanding of other, other systems and other consciousnesses you know, in the star systems as well that went on during that that visit. Then um, once this was kind of complete, uh, we were set back on the road still moving forward, and it was quite an experience because, you know, one minute you're somewhere else, and the next minute, boom, you're on the road driving again. And uh, they, they had put a... They had put something in the in the road for us to swerve around so that we'd have a shock, so we would have amnesia for what happened and then uh but the only thing was is that we got up to the um the work camp and we were three hours late and so that was kind of a giveaway but my friend and i we we didn't even talk to each other for for like like three days. we'd just look at each other uh we couldn't talk I about to ask it. You about it. I wanted to ask you whether you were able to at some point really share with people. I mean, I know that you mentioned about this story with me and that now people is more open to all of this, but I imagine back in the, in the day, you know, maybe it wasn't mm-hmm. easy for you to be able to relate what has happened to you. Well, what happened to me personally is, is that um, my whole life changed in that moment i mean i was the path that i was on i was i was doing you know i was partying a lot and this sort of thing and i remember uh even afterwards coming back and thinking well i i, I could probably party again and so i went you know to this bush par- you know remember i'm in my 20s right and right, right. i went back to this i went to this bush party and i'm 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 at this bush party standing on the outside edge and I sense something, you know, over behind me or something. I turn around and I take a look and this native man in full leathers walks up to me, moccasins and all, walks up to me and he says, what are you doing? And I said, we're having a party. And he says, no, (laughs) what, what are you doing? And I said, I just looked at him and you know, when you get that shock, you know, that, oh, my God, you know, and I dropped my beer and everything, and I just was stunned. And when I, wow. when I came out of that stunned state, I turned and I looked, and he was walking back into the bush, right? Uh, you know, it was just a reminder to, to come back to the past, right? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So what, does that, what did, was that like for me? It, it changed my whole life, it, I shifted from where I was headed to to where I am now and got, uh, I mean, the feeling inside is utter freedom, uh, complete freedom, lightness. Uh, the, the, you sense, the senses are so, um, you're so aware of how free uh, you can be. We we can't even imagine that freedom uh, most of the time, right. right? As to how how it's all to do with the fact of what you're practicing in your mind. That's truly the hypnosis. Um, yeah, we're all hypnotized. Talk about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you could also tie that into what made you decide to be a hypnotherapist because there are so many different ways in which we can help others, but for some reason it seems that for you hypnotherapy is one of the, the things that you have chosen and that you are focusing on. Well, well hypnotherapy hypnotherapy was an is in alignment with what I'm sharing from what ex- 
what I experienced. Because we are hypnotizing ourselves, um, right. I, underst- I understood there was a hypnosis going on. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to take hypnotherapy to find out exactly how they were how this was happening to us, how humanity wow. was being hypnotized into wow. lack and limitation and withoutness and all that stuff. Because we are being hypnotized. Our natural state our natural state is God and goddesses, not not limited, right? I mean our natural yeah. state you can heal you can heal in a moment. You don't have to you know take forever to heal. Our natural state, yeah. uh, and so I guess I had a glimpse of that natural state and remembered that natural state, and that helped me to, mm, you know, bring that out to people. But that's why I got into hypnotherapy, was I wanted to understand how humanity was doing this to themselves, how they were hypnotizing themselves into limitation, because you can hear them talk, and they will always and they come back to this, you know, a lot of people come back to this limited state. Oh, but we can't do that. We're not, you know, sort of thing. And who am I to think that I could do something like, you know, this? This is the kind of stuff that people talk about inside their heads, right? And so I wanted to be able to understand how that was being done. And then I figured it out, and then I help people now, uh, come out of that limited state and into the the, the power of their true nature. Wow. Yeah, and I know yeah. that with some of the um, conversations that we have, um, I always notice, you know, that you um, have a very positive influence, you know, and you always find little things that we can, you know, just the fact of you saying it kind of changes a little bit the way we may think about ourselves. So I yeah. really appreciate that, and especially also that you are willing today to do this kind of introduction into finding one's full purpose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find that yeah. uh, I'm having just a little trouble hearing you, but um, I keep turning up my, my speaker so I can hear you. Okay, okay. I wonder if the sound is not good. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you better now, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you so much. If at any time you cannot hear me, let me know, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And how long have you been uh, in hypnotherapy? So, in hypnotherapy... um 14, 15 years, eh? I started out, yeah. I started out with, uh, before I was a hypnotherapist, I used to run these groups for adults that were learning disabled. And I would, uh, mm-hmm. I would share with them how to use some of the techniques, the mind freeing techniques that I had discovered in helping them to overcome overcome their disability and uh that was really really fun and interesting because the shifts that would happen quite quickly to them surprised them surprised the teachers and surprised the psychologists at the time too yeah oh wow yeah you have a very Uh, unique style of hypnotherapy i noticed in your website all the things that you described it really makes me wonder uh, how how did you come up to do this specifically in this way because I have uh, I have my own training that I received in hypnotherapy but what you are doing is very very different and how did you choose to create this style? Well, part of it part of it was um, what I understood from my experience with the Octurians. Um, wow. the, part of it was that. Um, the the other part was through experiencing it with people. As we know, there can be a certain amount of resistance around the idea or concept that somebody is going to, uh, the words used are, take control of my mind, which I don't do. I don't want control of your mind. I want you to have complete control. 
And mm-hmm. and so in developing the Hartman approach, there's this this concept that I looked at. Uh, there's different schools out there that teach different things, and 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 to overcome to overcome this resistance aspect. Um, what I found was that uh, the teaching at the time was that you had to get faster and be more powerful with your technique to overcome resistance. And I, I figured out ways that I didn't like that idea because it was it seemed very pushy to me. And then if I push a person, the end result is, is that they think I did it to them which isn't the case. It isn't uh, an, an approach that I like. I want people to, to know that that I'm not doing this to you and the result is what you're getting, but that you're doing it to you and then you can take this result with you and the techniques with you and do it anytime you want to, right? That it brings the power back to the person. So I noticed in some schools, I don't know which one you went to, but I know in some schools the the concept was to overcome or overpower the client. And never, never. I, just, I, I would never go for that for sure. <laughs> no, no, I didn't either. I, I said this has got to be changed because because it, it, it gives the wrong impression that that they're right. not in control of their life, but I am. And and they have to keep coming back to me for more, uh, which I didn't didn't like either. I want people to know that they can do it themselves. So that was that was that's one aspect of how it's different is that I've removed all the ego out of it. We nice. the other aspect is is that I don't I don't do deep trance. Um, what I do do is open eyed trance, and people say, well, how yeah. can a person be in a trance if their eyes are open? And I says, just right. watch anyone that watches TV, and you'll see an open eyed trance, and it's very effective because they spend how many billion dollars a year on advertising. It's very effective. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. And it's an open-eyed trance. And I found that with an open-eyed trance, a person gets to know their greater part of them. I, I believe that there are two consciousnesses existing in us at all times. There's the Godhead or the source energy or your true connection to source. And there's the conscious mind that's been basically hypnotized by society. And wow. with an open-eyed trance, we get to bridge those two. We get to understand wow. that we can be conscious and live from the, the, the God self, consciously, yeah. right? And that's what all the hypnosis, societal hypnosis is about, is so that you never figure this out, that you never get wow. in contact with your own God within. So did you start just like making tests uh, with friends, like trying this system, or how did it work for you to to really start applying it and to have people, I don't know, really uh, trying it out? <laughs> well, I worked for I worked for a company. I won't mention, but I worked for a company at one time that was a big company, uh, a hypnosis. Uh, practice and they had over 1500 clients at any given time in the system and wow. what i noticed what i noticed was is that they utilized deep trance and the deep trance um what they would do with deep trance and 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 giving suggestions that we had about a 30 percent success rate and but what I was noticing in my pre talk when I was pre talk in the pre talk with clients, I was doing a lot of things in the pre talk and the changes were happening and it was almost like I was doing the trance just as as a you know, because they paid for the trance, the deep trance, so they'd get a deep trance. But um what I was noticing is that as I was working with clients, more and more were responding to the pre-talk that I was doing. And I got to look at what I was doing in the pre-talk. And, and then I started to work with it there. I, the, how did I know that it was effective? 
is that out of the 1,500 clients, a thousand of them wanted to see me. And because there was something really happening with, with what I was doing. And wow. they were arguing to see me. <clears throat> oh and it was because, it was because that we were doing this, I was doing this bridging technique, right? I was doing this in the pre-talk and I was, I was doing most of the work with the eyes open. See, the thing with this is that, that what I feel is that, that, the real problem is is that we're not bridged to our greater mind is the problem with with society with humanity uh, and there is i mean this goes all the way back to the time of 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 Zeus i believe who said you know these human beings are getting so powerful they're starting to scare me and so i'm going to put them in a trance and split them in two now what he did was actually, I feel, he split the consciousness in two, right? So we had a conscious and an unconscious. Wow. So together, so together, uh, we're quite powerful. And so, I mean, it really, if we look at it, it goes back to that time where, uh, you know, the Zeus, God, the Zeus, was scared that humanity were was actually going to rise to his level. And so he did something. So that people couldn't, and I, you know, I don't know. That's what. Uh, wow. I every time I talk with you, I really feel like I have to just uh, get a session with you. You know, <laughs> that if I don't get into the full training, because you also offer uh, training, right, for people that would like to offer this or to others or for themselves. How how that that work? If they want to take training, I'm having uh, another. Uh, a training session. This can be done over over Skype. Uh, it lasts for eight months, um, but we see each other once a week. Um, wow. We see each other once a week, and then they have tasks to do during during the week. But we see each other once a week for um, for for eight months, and once they're done, then they can be certified at, in the Hartman approach. Wow. Yeah. And, that, and it's over so that, Skype or, or in, in the office, either way. Yeah. Okay, so online or in the office, and your office is in, what is located? My office is in Edmonton, Alberta. And so, uh, you know, for those that are in, in the Edmonton area, if they want to come in personally, we can do that. Or, or if you're not, that's fine. I've worked with, I have uh, trained hypnotherapists as far away as Norway. Um, oh, wow. online okay. mm -hmm. and the course is designed in a way where there's online online videos to watch uh, there's tasks where you go out into the general public and you work with some of these techniques now these techniques aren't 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 uh, harmful they're just changing the way one talks changing the way one approaches another human being uh, and and when we do that, uh, there's changes that start to happen. So the tasks are given to the students to go out into the real world and experience what happens here, right, when you do these things. Right. When you... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is something yeah. that um, it would be, for what I hear, maybe a little bit about improving oneself, improving uh, one's communication, and also oh. helping empowering others and becoming a powerful force in the world just by interacting with other people? Yes. When you take a look at a person, like when you meet a person and you look yes. at them and you look deeper and you acknowledge and recognize the God within them, there's amazing mm. things that start to happen. That's so true. That's so true. Be because when you start to recognize the God within the other person, um, that God within responds because nobody's doing that anymore. We're only looking at the surface. Okay. But when we look deep inside, you know, there's mm -hmm. an old saying, um, I don't know the exact words, but it's a, it's a tribe in Africa. And they say, you know, 
I see you. They don't say hello. They right. say, I see you. Right. And then the, res- and the response is, thank you. When you see me, you bring me to life. Oh, wow. And okay. this is what's going on with um, this program. Like in my advertisements, I mentioned the fact that we're, you know, through this program, we're, we're, we're really, if you're into awakening humanity to their true nature, Mm-hmm. Um, this is what the the this program is about, right? Is helping people to not only awaken themselves, because I mean, a lot of my students will tell you that the first thing that happens is that they they get a healing going through the course, right? Absolutely, but that's I can imp- imagine. And but this is important because as you receive that healing going through the course, then you 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 have the um, the knowledge to help other people too through something called wisdom, uh, mm. where wisdom is different than knowledge. You know, right. you can know a lot of things, but to have wisdom that's true gold. You know, absolutely, and I can totally relate about that. And you know, not only because then we can put ourselves in the place of the other person and see that there is a way out from where they are and that mm-hmm. we have experienced something similar, but also I feel that always when we change our inside, it's like we change all around us. It's like having a net of a fisherman and taking one of the dots and pulling that up. It cannot uh, you know, it's going to make everything around change, right? All the mm-hmm. dots around that one are going to change also. So it's like we are transferred to a different reality. We start seeing others more for what they truly are. So for, mm-hmm. it's really something that I always recommend to start in one <laughs> oneself, and then we can expand that to others for sure so I can totally oh, yeah. see how effective it is to be doing something like your training what you are sharing about there there are there are people that have just taken the course personally for themselves to go through it to for their own self healing and then there's other people that have taken it again for themselves and then move out and, and, and start to practice it as well but uh, and both and all are welcome. Now, there's other people, too, that take the course, and then wherever they're working in their own professions, they, 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 they shift what they're, you know, they shift the profession that they're working in by, by what they know. Uh, I was working with a, a, a lady who had taken, she was taking the course, and she was working with children that were fetal alcohol syndrome children. Hmm. And they had about a 75% restrain rate, okay? So they were restraining these kids, 75% of them, every day. Because Hmm. um, now what she learned through the course was she learned how that, how how these, by asking questions, you know, and us us working together on this, literally, she, she discovered what, systems these kids were using and why they were going into these states and panicking and becoming, you know, aggressive. And also looking at the the patterns that the staff was doing. So the children would go into these states, the staff would go into fear, and then it would escalate, right, into where they mm-hmm. had to restrain kids. And so uh, what what she discovered and what we came up with uh she was able to as soon as she noticed the pattern of these children starting to go into this state of anxiety or fear or whatever and them feeding off each other she would do diversion techniques you know oh do you hear that bird instead of going into anger or fear or frustration so what ended up at the end of the day what ended up happening was is that when she was on shift, she had zero restraints. Huh. When she wasn't on shift, boom. So then they made they they advanced her very quickly, and 
and she went to teaching the others how to do this, how to be able to work with these children without having to restrain them simply by using diversion techniques, Uh by by instead of buying into the pattern that everybody, you know, I I I dance this way, you're going to dance this way. She would just change the tune, literally, mm. and wow. so it wouldn't happen. And she trained trained the staff how to maintain a peaceful, calm uh, demeanor no matter what was happening, and just use these diversion techniques, right? Mm. Beautiful. And I want to remind our listeners that in order to call for a question for the Q&A, just call to 347-215-8586 and then press the number one. Okay. (laughs) So one more thing. Um, You know, I was wondering, uh, how did your work change uh, throughout the years? Because you have been in this for ten, over 10 years training people. So mm-hmm. I would imagine that there have been things that through experience you have been modifying a little bit. So I would be um, curious to know what... Well, yes. At first, at first it, was, uh, it was all about deep trance. And I, and I don't know if there's any other, you know, hypnotherapists out there as well. Uh, but... There, there can be a lot of focus on the fact of going into a deep trance, that mm-hmm. we have to do that, that that's right. important, that that's the only way that change can happen. Mm-hmm. So when I realized that it isn't up to me, really, and I started to, I started to understand this greater being within them, within people, it's up to that being how deep the trance was going to be. It's not up to me, right? right. Uh, that that, you know, that is the power in their life, is that, that aspect of them. So when I started to change my ideas about being so uh, focused on having people go into deep trances, and I just let go and allowed them their their trance, you know, however their trance is going to be is going to be for them, right? Right. That took mm-hmm. that took a lot of pressure off. And mm-hmm. and and it lightened it up for more about it was more about the therapy than it was about the trance then, right? Right. And we see we see a lot of people struggling with this, you know, focus on whether uh, I go into hypnosis or I don't go into hypnosis, you know, the clients or the, the, the therapist worrying about whether they're putting people in a deep enough trance or not. It's got nothing to do with that, really. It's got to do with helping people understand that they're already hypnotizing themselves every day. And they're hypnotizing themselves every day to a life that they probably don't want. Hmm. So that... That that's what changed in my life. Instead of focusing on deep trance, I started to focus on what was important was the change work, right? And that the trance, whether they go into a deep trance or a light trance or however trance that you know level of trance they want to go into, is up to them, yeah. really. You know. Beautiful. Wow. So that's a very different way of uh, of going through hypnotherapy for what I've been practicing because it seems that most people feel that in order to be in hypnotherapy, they have to be like almost out of themselves in a very deep mm-hmm. front that they're not going to remember anything. And this oh, yeah. that you are sharing is totally different. Would that be maybe a little bit more like the Ericksonian hypnotherapy or what oh, would definitely. be the difference? Yes. yes? yes it's okay. more Ericksonian hypnotherapy. Yes. Oh, and okay. yeah, and and so and so the thing with this is that that's also advanced. Like Ericksonian hypnotherapy has, we we've taken it even farther and advanced that to the point hmm. where I mean, just simply take a look. Anybody can see this working. Is it takes it takes? Uh, they say it takes fifteen minutes for a person who has never watched television before 
to sit down and watch TV and to go into their first trance with the television because the flicker rate on the television is the same uh, frequency or flicker rate as as what is uh, a state called alpha right. brainwave patterns. So the television right. is flickering at you at that rate. Now you watch 15 minutes for the person who's never seen a television before. Now after that, it only takes them 10 minutes, only takes five minutes. And af- after a while, they sit down and their mouth drops open and their eyes glaze over the moment they <gasps> sit down. That's true. Oh, my goodness. That's so true. Thank you for sharing that. And if you would uh, go a little deeper into explaining about the alpha and theta, you know, so that our listeners also understand a little bit more how these different states may be. So so beta, beta is um, the wide awake state, when we're wide awake kind of thing, eh? Right. That's the beta state. You know, your your brain is functioning in a in an active, you know, mode. Then there's alpha, which we daydream, right? We go into daydream. Right. And this is basically uh, the the lower levels of alpha and the beginning levels of theta is where we do most of our hypnosis work, right? Mm. But we tend to hypnosis work way down into the deep levels of theta. And as the brain brain patterns or brain waves start to slow, we go into deeper and deeper levels of this, this, these brain wave patterns get slower and slower until Mm -hmm. we're in the lowest one, which is delta, which is deep sleep. Right. And they have come up with a couple others but I'll just speak on these ones now. And so deep sleep is, is, is delta. Now, I had, I had training, a lot of training, and when I worked in, the, in the, that clinic, they had made a big mistake um, with the way things were set up. They had a machine that was called the David machine, and this David machine would emit... Uh, the the tones and the flickering uh, through these glasses with lights. And you know and what? These... I somebody put me in one of those. I didn't. I don't know if it was a good idea. A long time ago. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Oh. oh my goodness! Tell me about it. Tell me <laughs> what is that? So, so what happened is is that is that. You know, people would put these glasses on, headphones, and they'd hear the tones. Right. They had some nice music right. playing. And I had yeah. a mic set up so that I could do the hip, the hypnotherapy, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but they had it miswired. And I was hearing the theta tones because they use theta. I was using, I was hearing the theta tones all day long. You know, seven clients a day, five days a week, listening to theta tones. I was in tremendous deep trance states with my eyes open all the time, right? Oh, so I yeah. I got well practiced in being able to hold, um, you know, different brainwave patterns without having to close my eyes. And this is when I discovered this, too, partially, is that oh my gosh, I can go into these deep states and I don't have to close my eyes. But when you mm-hmm. do this. When you do this, you really begin to get an idea of how free we really are because as you drop into these deeper states with your eyes open, things start to change. The people you look at start changing form. Their face starts to change. Oh, my Uh, goodness. The walls start to shift. Uh, You realize that... This reality Mm -hmm. isn't as solid as you think it is. It's only held together by a strong, uh, a a strong group manifestation. Really, Mm -hmm. when you start dropping into these states with your eyes open, you begin to see that this isn't as solid as you think. Right? That's right. When I'm when I'm working with people and I drop into. 
the state. See, I join them in the state. I don't, the old school used to say stay out of the state. Uh-huh. You have to be yeah. the operator. Well, right. no, I join. I go, I go right in with them. And oh, when I drop, nice. I, I drop right in with them. Actually, right. that's, that, that's an induction style, if you know what I mean. Induction, mm-hmm. how to induce it. Yes. Is right. that, is that because I'm the only representation in the room, I drop into the state and in order for them to make sense of what I'm doing, they start doing it too. <laughs> and so I don't, I don't, I don't have to argue at all. Uh, in that sense, I just drop into the state, and and then they 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 drift too into mm. it. Now, what? going into that state together, there's, I mean, I used to pre-think of all the things that I was going to do with the client, and I was always mm. disappointed because, of course, something else would happen, and so instead of living oh, that right. frustration frustration anymore I threw that all out and I just drop in with them and the healing our intention is to heal so as I drop in drop in and they drop in with me it automatically starts to unfold from that state it's mm-hmm. quite interesting mm-hmm. oh how beautiful thank you so much for sharing that and you know we have a, a caller with a question and I don't okay. want to make people wait too much, so let's call, and then we most likely will go into the uh, life guided uh, hypnosis with you. So one okay. moment, I will be taking a call from area code six to six. So six to six, be ready. <laughs> Hello, are you there? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi. Thanks for having me. Sure. Do you have a question for our, our guest? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. I, I wasn't listening from the beginning. I cut the show a little late, so I'm not sure if you covered this already. But um, my first question is uh, relating to the the possible use and if it can be used, the effectiveness of hypnotherapy for uh, physical injuries and diseases. Well, you know... Um I worked with for years with the figure skaters here in Canada and mm. and they would receive injuries, eh? You know? And it's interesting what would happen if we went back in time and and changed the outcome of the injury as to how it happened. Huh. Okay. Um mm. uh, so instead of them falling they actually stood up, right? Mm. And went back through through it up to the to the present moment and then just used some some visual techniques like taking a look at what the injury looks like but yet what the other say leg what the other leg looks like healthy and then just having that greater part of them change the color you know so there would be a a color designated for the injury and a color for the healthy and just shift the color in the leg that was injured and their greater mind would do that automatically for them and Mm -hmm. the healing was i mean i've had experiences where it was uh a bit miraculous actually (laughs) Uh, i mean they'd get up with this this one specifically i'm speaking of had a sprained ankle and in her mind it was completely purple and she had, she was a figure skater, and she was supposed to be going to the nationals. And she was actually doing gymnastics that day and sprained her ankle, and she was really, really freaked out. Mm. And so we just went back and pretended as if she landed the landed uh, perfectly and didn't sprain her ankle. Come back to this point uh, in the present, and then just shifted the color from one from the from the ankle, you know. Moved that color out, moved in the new color, and she got up and she says, after the session, she says, I can walk on it and I can stand on it, you know. Mm. But wow. she was really beating herself up about the fact that she had went to gymnastics and she knew she shouldn't have. And so by her really doing a lot of self-beating herself up over that, um, she was actually making it worse. Wow. So does that answer your question? Kind of? 
Uh, yeah, in, well, related to this, um, so I I had the experience of just uh, having a, a shift in in mindset about something and then feeling better. Um, I'm wondering mm-hmm. if if your if the, your the idea that you're uh, relating this to is more along the lines of that, or do you actually see, like in the example that you gave with the ankle, if the ankle was uh, to do the hypnotherapy session, uh, now not swollen or healed, or if you saw an actual mechanical difference in the uh, the, the appearance of the ankle? Well, what I, I because I worked with her over the phone, I couldn't see it personally, but she said that the swelling was the swelling started to rapidly go down. Yes. Wow. And it looked wow, that's yes. Crazy. Because because the thing with is that, uh people people uh don't realize that it you know, in a lot of times they don't realize that it's your own body. I mean, you can key in what you want it to do. Another lady that I worked with had Parkinson's really, really bad. And she couldn't even take a, a glass of water and, 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 and drink it because it would slop all over, right? Wow. But I noticed when she was in trance, she didn't shake. And I'm thinking, hmm. this is odd. Okay, right. so if she's in trance and she doesn't shake, then I wonder if we could give her, uh, we could give her a hypnotic anchor, it's called, while she was in trance for her to stay stable. Right, mm. and that the suggestions were that when she came out of trance, that I would give her this keyword, and 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 she'd stay stable. So she come out of trance, and when she came out of trance, she's just shaking and shaking, and then I gave her the keyword, and all of a sudden it stopped. And for the first time in a long time, she felt the tremors stop, while wow. she burst into tears, because. Oh. You know, that one I've seen live. That one I've oh, seen with my wow. own eyes. How beautiful. But I always just got curious, you know, as to what this God within could do. Mm. Uh, you know, and it, it built you in the first place, but yet somehow we think that we're going to consciously control everything when it was this part of us that is really beating our heart, breathing us, digesting our food it's looking after everything and yet and yet we don't ask it to do things you know yeah mm. wow. how Powerful beautiful stuff. <laughs> does that is that uh is that answer kind of answer your question yeah yeah that's great that's great and that actually kind of uh leads into my next question um I had some hypnotherapy sessions about uh, about 10 years ago when I was in school just to help Mm -hmm. me study for exams. And um, during the time that I was researching about it and asking other people about it, uh, something that came up fairly frequently as well as one of my own concerns was um, the what would happen if you, if if a hypnotherapist, or somebody who knows hypnotherapy techniques were to use it with either uh, not so positive intention or perhaps were to uh, give a suggestion that perhaps the hypnothera- hypnotherapist thought would, was good, but the, the receiver um, perhaps didn't. Mm-hmm. That the receiver wasn't really plugged into, right? Yeah, say for example, it's just a difference of opinion. If the the therapist were to think that uh, one thing would be good for the the uh, for the receiver, but the receiver would probably not have uh, seen that as being a positive thing for for whatever whatever the application was. Well, the thing it is, I'm going to say, I'm going to I'm going to answer this in two ways. Um, one is is uh, the un- the unconscious aspect that that God within wouldn't allow that sort of suggestion to take hold, right? Like they've done studies on this where, um, you know, 
a, a person's asked to throw acid on another person, and they won't do it, right, in trance or out of trance or suggestion or not. But then again, uh, if you build a story and you say that this person uh, did all kinds of things to your family and, you know, created a whole backstory about it and everything else, they found that the person would end up doing that, throw the acid on a person, which wasn't acid, it was just water. But the person didn't know that, right? So, so this sort of thing, this sort of thing can happen with enough backstory and enough, uh, you know, that you could get somebody to do something or somebody could accept a suggestion that wasn't, it wasn't so so great. But just off the bat, like to sit there and give a suggestion, uh, no. Like there's a story one time about a fellow who wanted to quit smoking in his car, right? And so the hypnotherapist thought, well, I'm going to help him quit smoking altogether because it's a nasty habit and shouldn't be doing it and everything else. So they went through session after session after session after session. It was it was a long thing, and, and the guy still didn't quit smoking completely. But when the guy looked back on his notes, the hypnotherapist looked back on his notes, the, actually the fellow quit smoking in the car on the second session. <laughs> and never came back to it. So what he wanted... Oh, my goodness. It's always... To me, it's always about what the client wants. I don't have an opinion, right? It's always about, and I always develop it out of what the client wants, uh, including their own trance state, right? Um, out of what the client uh, has experienced or, or wants, because in that way you're in congruency with the client. And you don't have this sort of thing happening, right? Right. I see. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that that answers the question. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Oh, you're very <laughs> welcome. And what was your thank name? Thank you so much. Oh. I think I think he came out maybe from there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have one more call, and so we will take this um, from area code seven. One seven. Okay. okay, so seven one seven, please be ready. Hello, are you there? Hello, seven one seven. Hello? Yes, hi. Hi. Hi Dwayne, this is Majena. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. So my question for you is I love the area where you called about the way that you um treat other people and you see the God in them. Yes. So uh-huh. I'm working with, with this guy that drives me crazy and I'm a server, a waitress, and I, through my being of light, I am able to influence people most of the time, but he's being very difficult. He's very disrespectful to women in general, and he just pushes my buttons, let's just say, and, you know, I'm just trying to figure out from your perspective how you phrase that, how I can better approach the situation. Well, the thing that is, is, <clears throat> excuse me, people people don't know what their energy feels like when they're doing that sort of thing to another human being, right? Okay. So I I suggest to people to visualize a mirror in front of them and mirror all that energy back to him and better yet to his higher self. And so his higher self can deal with that that energy. But if you imagine, right, even right now, you think about this fellow, uh, do you do you have a feeling inside of you about him? Like do you have a do you have a kind of like a, a hit in your feelings about him? Just just I don't know, dislike for the way he's disrespectful to women, you know, he just walks around yeah. slowly talking about he's a gigolo and this and that mm-hmm. and whatever. He just doesn't take his work seriously and it makes me uncomfortable, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And wherever you feel that feeling in your body, that uncomfortableness about him, that's kind of an energy stream from him, okay? Okay. You know? And if you take and cut that energy stream off, you just cut it off because it's not yours. You don't need to feel it. And okay. instead you put a, you put a mirror up, right? 
Right. And now imagine him doing the same thing, but that energy bounces off of you and goes back to his higher self. How do you feel? Oh, very good. Much better. Like untouchable, yeah. really. Yes. So so you see you see that that even though you're not in the room with him right now, on another level on a on another level there was still that connection going on, you see? And it can be an unhealthy connection. And so if you just cut it off and you put a mirror up and reflect it to his higher self, then you're not it's not draining you anymore, right? Yes. Yes, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so now now for him for him um because you know probably if you tried to talk to him about what he's doing and everything else I'm already getting it from you he's probably not going to respond well to it. But this right. is a way that he gets his energy back and he learns about his own energy. People people don't understand this is kind of a loving thing to do because in order for him to evolve, if everybody keeps absorbing this energy from him, then then he's not going to change. It's like not it's like uh uh what do they call it? Uh it doesn't matter. But it, he's not going to change because people keep absorbing this energy. But if you reflect it back to his higher self, then all of a sudden now he's surrounded with his own energy, right? And you're not taking it anymore. We yes, can change. Because I was taking it so much that I got sent home. You know, mm-hmm. that my boss felt that I was being too critical of him when it, it was just he was just affecting my work day. Yeah. And so now imagine yourself going to work. And there you are at work and there's the guy and he's doing what he's doing. And but you're behind this mirror, right? And it's all reflecting back to him. That's beautiful visualization. I love it. And how and how do you feel at work being around him now, knowing that you're cut off from this and it's reflecting back to him? Just back of my power. That's what mm-hmm. it is. That's exactly what where we want you is back in your power, right? Yes, back in my power. And how does that feel to be in your power? Like a goddess, like you were saying, my natural yes. being. Yes. Mm. Yes. And every yes. time that you every time that you breathe in, you can expand that goddess energy. And. Just notice how big you can make it, you know? That's fabulous, Joining. I love it. You know, it's all about focus and understanding that our awareness makes things more, always. So that awareness, what we become aware of, becomes more. So as you shift to your own goddess energy, breathe in, you start to expand it because you become aware of it, right? Yeah. And where it lives in your body and how it feels when it gets bigger. Yes. Feels great. Mm-hmm. Good. Beautiful. Thank you thank so you much. So much. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank oh, you for coming. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank, thank you so much. Thank you for... Bye. Take care, thank Dwayne. You. Bye-bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay, so we're going to have to wrap the question uh, Q&A section and go into the hypnotherapy session. I'm so excited about this. I'm going to participate. I I will be okay, right, to, to close the program. <laughs> yes, yes. So are we okay, having okay. guests calling in that need to work on something? Um, we should complete um, the Q&A right now, you know, sure. and, and just go, yeah, for the hypnotherapy session. So what we're going to do is going to be, I would imagine, something light, uh, meaning that this is like the opening the doors so that people have an idea of how it can feel to work with you. And I know that you are all about raising vibration, and this will help also people um getting closer to their soul's purpose. Mm -hmm. So I leave it all up to you. I'm going to just be here in silence, and this is 
your time <laughs> to guide us. Okay, okay. So um, I, I'm just just for clarity. Um, did you want a guided kind of a guided meditation, or did you? Am I working with people in uh, them making changes? Um, the ideal would be just something for hypnosis so that they have a little bit of an idea. Of course, it's going to be something general. It cannot be for mm -hmm. each person's specific issues, but something for all of us to raise our vibration and connecting with our soul purpose. So just like an mm -hmm. opening to that awareness, would that okay. work for you? Sure. Awesome. So I think this is what you mean. <laughs> is that within all of us, within all of us, we have this source energy. We have this connection, this deeper part of us, the God within. All of us know that there is this part. Ever since we were children, we had this connection to this part of us. Through the years, as we grew up, we were taught to disconnect from this because disconnecting from it and becoming more um, socially hypnotized, we have a tendency to, um, well, be better, better buyers, put it that way. But as we stop for a moment and simply take a deep breath in, hold it to the mental count of three and slowly, slowly exhale, we come out of a certain part of our mind that is programmed to society and we come into a deeper part of ourself. So again, as we take a deep breath in, hold it to the mental count of three, we take three times as long to exhale and when we do, we enter into this field that Rumi talked about. It's a field beyond right doings and wrong doings. And I'll meet you there. This field is what the Eye of Horus is all about because it's a symbol to remind us where to go in our own brain. And if you look at the brain and you see it's sliced open. There's the eye, of course, there in the center. As we take our awareness to that part of us, it's very, very powerful. It's very, very free. Nothing of form holds us to anything. As we enter into this place, it's a portal a portal where science, religion, and creativity are all one thing. And in this place, we can begin to float ideas and concepts. We can begin to float energy. We can have wonderful energy, and we can float into that energy and become it. And discordant energy can float up and try to get our attention and our emotion and we just allow it to float by. As we start to practice these sorts of ideas, these sorts of techniques, we become more and more this way in our wide awake state where problems just drift by when we give them no attention. Because as we go into this state of mind, we're really connecting our right brain and our left brain together again as one. And we can creatively shift ourselves. Creatively shift vibration. It takes only a moment to think about the highest spiritual state that you've ever been in. And it takes only that same moment 
for you to recognize where you felt it in your body. High spiritual state, how it made you feel. And as you focus at where that feeling lives in your body, you can begin to breathe it in. Breathe in. Expand it. And the more you expand it, the more you notice that you're expanding this feeling. And you have every right to expand this feeling. This feeling, this feeling is what you're manifesting from now. You see, as you shift vibration, you shift the feeling in your body and then what you manifest changes. So you have the key right within you to go in, feel this lightness, feel this freedom of this state, And it goes out into your future and manifests itself and time catches up and you begin to experience it again. Because that's the way it's always been. Whatever we practice inside of ourselves for the future becomes. We really are source energy knowing itself. So when we allow source energy to change outside of us through shifting our emotion now, source energy becomes whatever it is that we want to experience. It always has. And it's always dependent upon this state of mind that we experience and that we do with ourselves So as we change what we think and how we feel inside, the outside changes. You become magic. Pure magic. What I want for each and every one of you is to discover your pure magic. You are. You are source energy. You're freer than you can even think. You always have been. The truth is that we only get our attention or our awareness captured by circumstances, events, and things that we look over here and we see and we get emotionally tied up about that, but yet we can let go and come back to our true nature and free ourselves into this magic that is you, this greater part of you, the God within you, sits and waits simply for you to say, could you change this for me? I'd like to see it like this. And as you practice what you would like, this part of you that is source energy manifests it so that you can have the experience of it, so that it can get to know itself even more. Each time that you do this, each time that you take a moment to stop, drop, and shift, you realize that there isn't just one reality on this plane of existence. There are as many realities as there are people. And that you can shift dimensionally, you can shift in every conceivable way simply by taking a moment to breathe in deeply, holding it to the mental count of three, and then slowly, slowly exhaling, and dropping into that midbrain place. And the more you practice this, the more your pineal gland and your pituitary gland open up and reveal to you more and more about who you truly are. You are source energy. You always have been. You've always been the original creators of this plane. And you always will be. So, simply take a moment in your own time 
to bring whatever it is that you've experienced here in this little chat back with you and become this energy here in your present moment as you begin to return at your own rate and speed. Wow. <laughs> I have to get back <laughs> to yeah. spending the show. <laughs> But I would just stay there for a couple of days. <laughs> that was you know what? Wonderful. I don't know if I leave that place anymore. <laughs> That's Actually. so good. That's so good. I yes, had a, psycholo- I- a psychologist friend take the course one time, and he said, Dwayne, he says, I want to ask you a very important question. I said, okay, what? <laughs> says, Why do we have coming out suggestions if it's so good? Oh. And I said, you know what, John? That's a very, very, (laughs) very good question. Right. That's very true. And you know, I feel... He didn't didn't know then, but that was my first beginnings to understanding that, that why do we come out of that trance state? They -hmm. say, well, you can't function very well. Yeah, you can. Right. It's amazing, you know. Yeah. People say don't and, don't listen to this in a moving automobile, but yet, you know, I used to test that stuff. I used to drive down the road and actually listen to um, oh. deep mantras, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness! Across, and time would warp, and I'd get across the city in much less time than it took when right. I was in the conscious state. <laughs> well, because I got uh, to spend. I don't recommend that for people, but... Yes, just in case. This is a disclaimer. We are not recommending that. <laughs> yeah. But well, no, I, I did no. also try things like that. Um, I I did some channeling while driving, and I did some uh, deep meditations while driving because my intention is to, for sure, 100% live in that space. So there are mm-hmm. some also uh, traditional Japanese meditations in which I teach my students to to also keep our eyes semi open like gazing so that we can really mm-hmm. be in that space between waking state and deep meditation so that we can really be yeah. th- like that all the time why not mm-hmm. so i fully totally agree with you <laughs> yes yes there's Beautiful. there's a lot of benefit like i mean i would you know i wouldn't again recommend it while driving but mm. but but you can do it when you're walking around the house or when you're doing whatever. Right. Go into that state and actually practice being what you would call conscious, which you're not. But but be in that high that that state of 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 the God within with your eyes open, right? And yeah, and I feel it take it may take time. You know, like maybe the mm-hmm. first few times, as you were saying, do it at home. I remember once I finished um, shamanic training, I went out and I was more in non-ordinary reality than in this world. So I had a a, a little bit of an incident with my car. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So after that, I learned, well, you can stay in that state, but you have to be also with your feet here. So kind of a combination of both states so that you can function fully. Uh, so yeah. now I can I can do those things, but just please, if you are listening to this, be aware of uh, you know we are not recommending to just go drive no. um, in meditation yeah. or hypnosis, but just yeah. start practicing at home and see how it feels. And little by little, if you feel safe at home, uh, maybe start you know practicing something a little uh, further, but. Always with a lot of uh, responsibility. <laughs> so I'm going to share share at this point with you about something that, you know, when you're just a, when you're driving down the road and something jumps out, and your foot hits the brake. Did you think about that? You didn't think about that. It's something no, that's right. Else. That's right. Yeah, right. It's, it's Unconsciously already, did that. Yeah. Or you're walking down the street. And you decide to cross the road, and something 
pulls you back and the bus goes by, who did that? Yeah. Right. When you're when you're sleeping and it's a minute before the alarm clock goes off, but you uh-huh. wake up at enough time to turn it off. Who was awake? Oh, yeah. So there's a part of us that is almost more awake. Mm. But yes, we, you know, we're saying uh, only practice these things uh, in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, just in case, you know, <laughs> we want to yeah, make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. And I, if you could share, how can people continue with these things that you are offering? Do you have sessions and also your training? How can they get in touch with you so that they can continue with this amazing healing and transformation? Well, my website is innerbalancehypnotherapy.com, and you can go to my website, and there's personal sessions, there's the hypnotherapy training, uh, there's also group programs uh, that I offer as well. So if you want to get together and get a group of friends together and uh, have one of, one of those, those programs, like the Human Harmonics program or Personal Transformation program, uh, they can do that uh, there at my website. Or I'm on Facebook, Dwayne Hartman on Facebook. I'm also I'm also on uh YouTube uh Inner Balance 11 on YouTube or Dwayne Hartman on YouTube uh and you can you can check me out there. Um you can also call me at 780-800-2264. And uh yeah. Beautiful and, and your you have a course mm-hmm. coming up um how yes. does it this work is online, right? It's online. And or at the yeah. office. So if it's um, if I have both, where I have online and at the office, I just set up my uh, computer and we do Skype conference and live with people here at, in the classroom. Oh, right? great! And so we nice. do it all together, right? Beautiful. And beautiful. There, there are pre-recorded videos online that you go through and you watch. There's one one for every week, uh, and you go through and watch the videos, do the tasks, and then we meet up uh, once a week on Skype and at the office here. Once a week, we meet up and we discuss any questions that you might have, explanations you need, whatever. Right? We go through it. And so, mm. and like I say, that lasts for that lasts for eight months. Right? Oh, wow! Amazing. I mm-hmm. imagine at the end of that program, you are a new person. Yes, a lot of people say that they're forever changed after they go through the program, yeah. 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 And again, even the training, even the training is different. Uh, You know what I mean? Some is similar to to other hypnotherapy programs. Some is a little bit similar. But most most part, it's quite quite interesting, quite different. (laughs) I was... uh, I was business partners with a fellow by the name of uh, Larry McLaughlin for many years until he passed, and um, and he he has uh, a program that was a, a advanced language patterns program sure. that uh, that he created, and and uh, we get to go through that as well, um, the advanced language patterns, and so much is. And so much is revealed right in the language, right? Right. You know, if some if somebody if somebody says to to you, um, yeah, that was that was that was quite a problem I had, wasn't it? You know, they've already got it in the past. You can hear the past tense in that, right? But if right. other people say, well, well, you know, I'll yeah, I'll try that out and see if that works for me. Well, you know that it hasn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> because there's try. Wow. And there's so many Sorry. words that are indicators that no, you know, this hasn't worked yet. Uh, we need to go do it again. Right. So a lot of interesting things that with language too. Yeah. Powerful. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you so much, Dwayne, for being here and for guiding us in that hypnosis session. And, you know, it is always so wonderful to connect with you. I appreciate all the work that you are doing, all the videos you have on YouTube to share also different things that you are doing. So thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me on. It's always a delight to talk with you. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we are be going um we are going to close up this episode of Earth Sky People Radio and next week we will be talking with Sandra Ingerman and Sandra Ingerman is a worldwide known author of many books in shamanism and she has been teaching for over thirty years. So check that out. All the details will be at my website, victoriavives dot com forward slash radio. And some announcements, if you are in Los Angeles, this might be of interest to to you because I have a special for my Crystal Healer Certification class in Los Angeles. And this is for the first three people who register, and it is a discount, a $25 discount in the most popular course at my healing center, which is the Crystal Healer Certification. So to benefit from this discount, just use the coupon code GEMSTONES, all together GEMSTONES, during your registration at crystalhealer.org. And as you know, this show is part of a network, the Enlightenment Evolution Network. And you can find many shows in this network. So we have one every day, and every host has a donation link in their show. So if you feel called to contribute, just make sure to to do that, to have that opportunity to send some love to us. Uh, we always appreciate it. Thank you so much. And just talking a little bit about the shows, tomorrow, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Rob Gauthier's show. Rob Gauthier is the creator of the Enlightenment Evolution Network, and he will be hosting the Enlightenment Evolution Hour. Also, Rob offers channeling and meditation classes available at threadchanneling.com. On Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Philip Malika hosting the Consciousness Evolution Hour, all things metaphysical from the perspective of the fifth dimension. On Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we have the Earth Experience with Kalina Angel, exploring our soul's expansion through our human experiences on Earth. And on Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, we have Odyssey of Ascension with Roxanne Swinghart, two hours of mind-bending Ascension downloads. She channels entities of the Oversoul Collective Fire. On Sunday, we have About Oneness, which is, uh, it has been running at a different time now. It's at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And on the 21st of September, she has a special guest. Uh, his name is Kirk Nilsson. On Monday, we have Daniel Scranton with Heart to Heart Radio at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. And he has different guests as well. Uh, last week, which was, well, actually it was this week, yesterday, he had the psychic Helene Lipson. So that was a very powerful session doing many readings. So check that out. It's in the archives. On Tuesday, uh, we have at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Soul Food Printer. And this is a combination between business and the spiritual world. So check that out with Rachel Arkelaus and Megan Crandall-Meyer. Uh, they normally have a guest also that is living their sole purpose so that they can share with you. And we go back to Tuesday evening with Earth Sky People Radio with yours truly, Victoria Vives, and my special guest who is Sandra Ingerman next week. Well, so just letting you know that I love you very much. I appreciate this time together, always connecting in one way or another. As you know, my website is victoriavives.com, and you can also connect with me on Facebook. So now I'm going to leave you with one of my songs, is Eternal Soul, and I look forward to connecting with you next week. Bye. We're used to growing up Thinking that we are separated But we are one We're used to 